Hi, this is Tara McGillicuddy, host of the ADHD Support Talk radio podcast. And a quick reminder that the ADHD Support Talk radio podcast is sponsored by addclasses.com. Sign up now for a free webinar by going to www.addclasses.com. And today I am rebroadcasting another episode about New Year's resolutions. And this one is with Alan Brown, and it's about solutions versus resolutions. In just a moment, we're going to be talking a bit about resolutions and solutions and adult ADHD. But before we get started with the conversation, Alan, can you let our listeners know a bit about yourself and how they get in touch with you after they've heard you on today's show. You bet. Well, first, thanks for having me back, Tara. It's great always to hear your fabulous voice, and happy belated New Year. So uh, I created um, the ADD Crusher uh, instructional videos for teens and adults uh, after I was diagnosed uh, late in adulthood or kind of middle adulthood and uh, ran around to buy books and then remembered that I can't read. <laughs> so I made videos that help people uh, learn coping strategies. And um, my website is addcrusher.com. And if you go there, there's a free ebook called Five Things You're Doing Every Day That Make Your ADA, Your ADD Worse. And believe me, you're doing them all. Uh, and also, if you happen to want to try the videos risk free, uh, do so. But use coupon code Tara MC. That's for Tara McGillicuddy, Tara MC. And that'll give you a 15% discount to try them risk free. So, again, thanks for having me on. Yeah, thank you. And definitely check out addcrusher.com. Some great stuff, the videos, the ebook, and just a very um, ADD-friendly site and very inviting for people with ADHD. The colors, the video, definitely check it out. It's got some great stuff. Um, so, yeah, I, I, you know, I love having you on my show. And um, I hadn't done this show in a while. I, yeah, after two months, I finally back with it. I did you know a quick show last week with myself. Um so, you know, you and I are going back and forth, and you thought the idea of resolutions, and, you know, as people are listening, you know, we're well into um, January. But I, I think this still makes sense, especially um, the the way you're gonna, we're going to go about talking about resolutions and ADHD. So I think it's going to be a great topic, and our listeners are really going to relate to it and get a lot out of it, Alan. Yeah, and, you know, it, it really is actually a perfect time to be talking about it because here we are, you know, a little more than two weeks into the new year, and I bet a lot of our, our listeners here are maybe reflecting on their resolutions. Um, about half of us make revolution, resolutions every year, and there's research behind this. And the reality is that over uh, over 90% of resolutions fail. They don't come to fruition. So right about now, two weeks in, maybe we're still chugging away on some of our resolutions, but maybe they're also starting to fall apart. And my whole shtick on this is if if your car park out in your garage or your parking space has a 1 in 10 chance of starting tomorrow morning or on any given day, <laughs> would you keep going out <laughs> Going out and downstairs in the morning to try and start it up to, to take you to work? No. You, and you, are these stats it. based on the everyday population, or is it adults with ADHD? It's Well, it's everyday people, but I think you and I can probably fairly um, extrapolate that if the average yeah. Joe and Jane are failing at 90%, we might be failing at a higher percent. Now, I don't well, wanna... that's what I'm thinking. If 90% of everyday population are failing right. at resolutions, what's it like, a tenth of percent of people with ADHD who may be, you know, <laughs> making their res? I mean, it's that's kind of, that's, I don't know, that doesn't sit well with me. It's I scary. Like and so, I didn't realize it was that high or that low, yeah. I should say, of success. And so all all the more to the point that and I what I say is don't bother. Mm -hmm. Don't bother. Now I, I do have an alternative, which is why we're here to talk about it. Mm -hmm. But I let's just touch real quick on, on why resolutions fail. Because there again, there is research around this. Um and you know, first of all, they're they're unrealistic. You know, I'm gonna work out seven times a week which is a great goal, but, you know, mm -hmm. if right now you're working out once a month, it's not really realistic. Um, this is a big one for me. They, they too often lack an, a powerful underlying motivation, which is, you know, for instance, if I want to, if I want to uh, lose 10 pounds so I'll look uh, great in, in that, those bathing trunks, you know, come, uh, come May, that's one thing. But if I want to lose 10 pounds because I want to live longer, or because I want to ward off type 2 diabetes. That's, you can tell the difference in the motivational value of that. So 
you know, a lot of folks use, um, you know, weak kind of underlying reasons, and, and they set themselves up to fail. Another one is that they're just vague. You know, um, you know, get better grades versus, no, I'm going to get a B-plus or better in my so-and-so class. That's a very different uh, and more powerful way to look at it. And then, of course, there's no action plan. You know, we, we have such a great time writing out these resolutions on New Year's Eve, and, you know, maybe we're a little bit hammered and say, yeah, I'm going to be king of the world by 2016, boy. And, um, but we don't then put down a plan of action so that, you know, Monday morning comes along or New Year's Day or here it is, you know, January, mid-January, and we don't have a plan uh, written down or in our uh, uh, planner or our, in our, our electronic calendar or whatever that says, here are the three things you need to be doing today to get um, to move toward that goal. So those are the kind of the reasons for uh, resolution fail, as I call it. Yeah, and, just, and we're all yeah, familiar with talking, them. I'm just thinking, like, you know, this really the people because you know the, we're towards the end of January. People listening probably like, okay, I've already failed at my resolutions. Why bother? But you're giving like some great statistics and information on why the typical type of resolution doesn't work for people in general, especially people with ADHD. But, you know, there are solutions and there are ways to make changes. Exactly. And, and you know, I don't trot out these failure statistics and reasons for failures to make anybody feel bad. And, in fact, my mission is exactly the opposite. Mm-hmm. And, and you know, so, so I, I say screw you, New Year's resolutions with, with all due respect. Um, and I, I believe in New Year's solutions. And what I mean is, you know, when you have a 90-plus percent failure rate, when you make a resolution, you're, you're in effect setting yourself up for failure in a way, especially if you're, you know, you, you know, not attending to some of the reasons for failures that I just outlined. But what if we set ourselves up for success mm-hmm. by, by focusing on more on simplicity over, you know, big, grandiose goals? And also, and this is really, it's, it's nuanced, but it's important. Let's focus on the abundance and blessings instead of the absence of what we, you know, are, are lacking, you know? Mm-hmm. So, so, for instance... And, and I see it as a five-step process, um, but, you know, it doesn't have to be really, you know, regarded as some rigid process. But step one would be, uh, you know, instead of looking at everything you didn't do right or, <clears throat> you know, everything that's wrong with you uh, from the previous year and now setting up to correct it, why don't we start by counting some of our victories of the last year, mm-hmm. right? Um, yeah. What are the things that, that went well for us? Um, I had a, I had a, a great year in, in a few respects. Uh, in in uh, the last year, and um, I want to reflect on those things because I want to remember what things went well. And mm-hmm. when you think about the things that went well, you automatically start to reflect on what your strengths are, right? Mm-hmm. Which is good. Yeah. Which is the opposite of resolutions, which focuses on what your weaknesses are. So that's you know that's like step one in a, in this different approach to New Year's, what I call yeah. solution. Interesting. I actually did that at the end of 2014. I was just, I don't know, it was just, the energy was just crazy, and I was just, I'm like, okay, I'm done with 2014. I want it to be over, and I'm like, wait a minute. You know, I had some great things happen this year, and it was, I made a list of, I don't know if it was, I think I did the top 14 of 2014, and I'm like, wow. okay, I feel a lot better. I, I, had, I had a good year. That I did some great things. Because when you when I got into that, okay, I just want 20, 2014 to be over. I want to start 2015. I, I want to make a new fresh start. I, it was important to remember the good things that happened, the successes I had and all that, because it's so easy, especially when we have ADHD, to, to just be stuck in that negative mindset. Yes. And as we both know, you know, staying in that, with that negativity and that negative mindset does not help us move forward. It hurts us. That's a, just a great point. And by the way, you know, as you're thinking about how things went, you know, for instance, at your job, where maybe things didn't go well, um, don't dwell on that, that because that's not what this exercise is about. Go, okay, well, that didn't go, but here I am. My job is to list, and you listed 14 things for 2014, which is awesome. I actually suggest yeah. people just sit down and list, you know, at least five things um, mm-hmm. that that were, you could call victories in the previous year. But great point. Let's get away from the negative self, self-talk at the beginning of a new year, and let's talk positive talk. The next thing, and this is related, that you want to do, step two, is do a gratitude prayer. You know, you think about this. Resolutions are kind of prayers for things that we don't now have, which is it's kind of a poverty mindset, if, if you think about it. It's sort of disempowering, ironically, right? 
But gratitude is empowering in and of itself. And there's a lot of research on this, by the way. Yeah. By the way, very recent research um, shows that when you uh, stop and when you are grateful, the more gratitude you express, the more easily you can pause uh, yeah. and have that pause that we ate years. But that, that's a slightly different topic. But So if you were able to tally your victories and then do a little gratitude prayer, um, think about the things that you're blessed to have, the shelter over your head. You know, your car actually does start <laughs> 10 times out of 10. Um, your, your, your income, your friends, your family, whatever other things you're grateful for. If you've just done these two things, now you're in an abundance mindset, which is very different from tallying all your wants and your needs and your shortcomings uh, to determine your resolutions, right? It, so, it is. And I know a lot of people listening are probably like, turned off at this abundance thing and I get to tell you going off you know gratitude going just going back like a few years ago I'd hear people suggest it and I just I thought they were full of crap and I'm like okay I'm miserable how's this going to help but you know what and you you just quoted that there's research behind it but I'm someone that has done it not as often as I'd like I want to add more of that because I know it works but it's it's something that, you know, you do a few times a day, just practice gratitude. And if you're an atheist and you don't want to call it a prayer, you know, call it, you know, a gratitude saying, it, it yeah. does help. You know, it's, but I know for a fact some of the people listening right now are going, that doesn't work. And I remember years ago on on Facebook people are doing, you know, the every daily gratitude stuff. I can't remember who it was. I think it was a professional organizer wrote some blog post about like against gratitude. I have ADHD. I have nothing to be grateful for. Uh, you know, but you know she was focusing on the negativity and she probably got clients who she helped with those issues, but you know, I really I I'm like one of these like I don't want to say a walking poster child for the gratitude, but I'm someone who didn't buy into it who was turned off by it, but the more I do it the better it makes me feel and the more success, you know, I get into my life. Well, and and I'm with you, Tara. I'm not one of these woo woo, feely, touchy, aum people. Yeah, no, I, neither one of us are. And if people yeah, have ever, you know, yeah. been at a conference with us and had a real conversation with us, they know that you and I are very real people and especially exactly. me, I say it like it isn't oftentimes you know, you offend do. people by it, but yeah, you know, yeah. it's you and I are both aren't those, you know, new age flaky people. <laughs> yeah, and, and, and I and I know you're right that there are people out there listening who are like you and me. It's like, hey, come on, don't talk about gratitude, prayers and abundance, all this stuff. But I don't teach stuff that isn't based in research. I don't. And I know you don't either, <clears throat> uh, Tara. You you talk facts and stuff that's proven, et cetera. And so when I talk about gratitude prayers, I'm talking from a research based perspective. And the so speaking we, we mentioned negative self talk. We also know from research that uh and this comes from Barbara Fredrickson whose whose book uh, Positivity is cited by lots of the top ADHD coaches uh, around the world she's basically saying that she they've done research and when you can get the ratio of positive thoughts and negative thoughts up to 5 to 1 you can actually see a material change in your life so you know just for those skeptics out there Trust, trust us. Um, the gratitude thing is not woo-woo stuff. Um, it is powerful stuff, and it actually can help you be healthier and improve your immune. There's a whole bunch of stuff that we won't get yeah. into here. But so here's here would be step three. After you've done these first two things, step three would be find one thing you like and do more of it. How's that for setting yourself up to succeed, right? If you look back, yeah. you've just tallied your victories. You've, you're, you've, you've gotten yourself into a, a good, healthy mindset of gratitude. Now. Let's find some things that you like doing. These are productive things. I, I don't mean like eating cupcakes. We we all like eating cupcakes. It doesn't mean, you know. Um, but find one thing that you like uh, and write down three to five things that you like. But then just pick one and then resolve to do more of that. And I'll give you a great example for me. It has been writing. I love writing. And I never give myself enough time. I should, you know, they say in the online world, you should be blogging every day. And I haven't given time to that. I'm blogging maybe yeah. once a week. But um, the more I have written and shared my writing, all of a sudden it's starting to get picked up. And I'm now about to be published in two magazines. So I'm like, hey, this is something I like. It's yeah. something I'm going to chalk up victories to and I'm grateful for. 
So I'm going to make, I'm going to resolve to do more of that. Isn't that a lot better than re- resolving to do something that I don't like? And that actually takes yeah. you to step four, which is find some stuff that you despise and do less of it. Mm-hmm. Now, you know, cutting out you know, Ch- Cherry Garcia ice cream is not easy because you love it. So, you know, you want to find something that you're really kind of PO'd about already, like, for instance, being late. Nobody, I don't like being late. And um, we 80 years are all too often late. We also don't like opening the door to that crazy cluttered closet all the time. So find something that sort of already pisses you off and then decide, I'm going to actually, I'm going to not tolerate that uh, this year and just focus on crushing that. So, you know, again, you're using existing kind of emotions and leveraging those to help you actually Beat this ninety percent failure rate. Wow! And, and then those the last, things they're they're simple. Not I mean not that they're easy, but they're it, it's just simple concepts that really work. Yeah, and I forget which of the martial arts is the one that you use your opponent's weight to beat them up. Is it jujitsu yeah. or I forget which I one have it no is. Clue. <laughs> but but there's one of these these uh, Asian martial arts where you actually use the your opponent's movements and momentum and weight to throw them over your shoulder. And hmm. this is what this is about. You're going to find things that you already like doing, and you're just going to resolve to do more of them. You're going to find things that already like, tick you off, and you're going to use that as motivation to, to stop doing those things or stop tolerating those things. So it's a form of kind of, you know, brain hack jujitsu, if you, if you will. And then the last step is, and you'll recall this from being a key reason why people fail in the resolutions, they don't make a plan. Make mm-hmm. a plan. Make a freaking plan. You know? Yeah. Yeah. Um and, and, and by the way, having a successful plan um is is relies in part on just picking one of the things I mentioned above. You know, don't pick yeah. four things that you hate you want to quit. Don't pick five things that you like you want to do more. Pick one of each. This is key. Um because again, you know, another big reason for resolution fail is that you're listing too many things. But if you just have two solutions that you're gonna pursue, you can actually have a good chance of finding the time and the wits to, to map out how you're gonna go about making each one happen. And you start by just creating a calendar entry to think about it or work on it. And and if you were to do that right on after this this radio show, do this little exercise, this simple five step exercise. Commit to doing that. And then when you get down to making a plan, put some to-dos somewhere in your calendar. And you will have just boosted yourself into a a completely different realm of possibility of success than the typical sitting down New Year's Eve and saying, I'm going to stop doing this and I'm going to start doing that and I'm going to work out this time, but blah, 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 blah. This is a, a, a great chance for a victory. It is, and I, I, you know, really want to thank you for coming on and bringing this to people's attention. And I just, you know, if people, you know, just practice this a couple times, and I think they'll be amazed at how, you know, their life can change. And don't worry, it's not woo-woo. <laughs> no, no. And, yeah, Alan and I are both real, realistic people. We're not the, we're not the, well, not really the flaky types. No, right. and, and like you're, it, there is research behind this, and you know, not only do I like not discuss things unless it has research. I like to actually try it myself, and as a yeah. person with ADHD, make sure it, it works for me, or, or you know, talk to somebody else who's tried it and had it work. Like I'm, I go beyond just the data and the research. I, I, I I'm even more skeptical than that. I want it someone I know and trust to really try it and say, okay, it's worked for them. Mm-hmm. Um. And, you know, another important thing is, you know, making things easy to try. And if ever there was something that, that's easy to try, it's there's this little five-step exercise. Tally your victories. Just be grateful for a moment. Count your blessings. Find some stuff that you like doing that you know helps you move forward and just elect to do one of those things some more. Find some stuff that you really gets on your nerves, like the cluttered closet or whatever that thing is. Uh, your messy garage, and say, you know, I'm, gonna, I'm not going to tolerate that anymore. And then make a plan. Mm-hmm. Beautifully simple, and you can get some results within the next few days. So you don't have to wait a year either. How's that? Very good. Well, Alan, I really want to thank you for coming on today's show and giving some people some, some great stuff to really work with. Um, so we are at the end of today's show. Are there any final thoughts you'd like to leave people with today? And can you also give out your contact information and that coupon code for your videos again? I guess I would just reiterate what you said earlier, Tara. You know, if we're, if we're more aware of our negative self-talk 
and, and know that we have control over that, that we can actually create a positive script for ourselves right now, today. And doing an exercise like this is, is a great way to do that. We can make a lot of progress. And I want to thank you, Tara, because I always love getting on and talking with you. The only thing that I wish is that we were seeing each other in person more often, but we're a continent away. But hopefully I'll be seeing you soon. And um, thank you, all listeners, Tara's listeners, for listening. And, and just a reminder, go to com and get the free ebook. It's five things you're doing every day that make your ADHD worse. ADHD worse. And believe me, I'm telling you, you're doing them all. <laughs> I'm going to show you how to stop doing them. <laughs> And then uh, if you want to try the videos risk-free, do it and use coupon code TARAMC, T-A-R-A-M-C, and you get 15% off, no risk, uh, if you're not blown away, money-back guarantee. And thanks again, Tara. Okay, well, thank you so much, Alan Brown, and thank you, everyone, for listening to ADHD Support Talk Radio. If you are listening to us on iTunes or Stitcher, be sure to stop by our website at www.adhdsupporttalk.com.